Hello and welcome back to our JRPG series. We're now going to be starting work on our field system, where the player is running around in the open environment and it gets teleported to a random battle. So we're going to create that today and also make it so we can save our progress, our levels and our health between battles. So let's begin. So to begin with, we want to change the map over to our level map. So in the folder for maps, you see I've already put in there for you uh, the street level map. We're going to there and open it up. Okay, so this is the one that's designed for us to run around in and explore and encounter random enemies. So we need to set up, first of all, the field gameplay in this. So I'm going to right click here and create a new folder. And we call this one field gameplay. And in there... We're going to set up our player controller and player character. The so new blueprint class, player controller, and this will be the field player controller. And we will make a new game mode as well. Field game mode, and also the player character. So do blueprint class, character, field, player, character. And let's go into the field player character first and set up the mesh cameras and inputs. So I'm going to go to here, go to mesh and choose our greystone. And give him the animation blueprint. Okay, now we'll just put that down here and turn that around like so. Okay, so now we have to add a camera to this, so it's going to be like third person view. So we're going to add a spring arm. And then attach that spring arm, it's going to be a camera. So the spring arm here, we want to rotate to be behind the character. And I'm going to raise it up a little bit as well. Like so. And the spring arm, I'm going to make sure I'm using the pawn control rotation. So I'm going to tick that on, so I can turn the camera around with the mouse. And uh, we're going to turn off use controller rotation your on here as well. Okay. Um, we then are going to click on the uh, class defaults and go to auto possess player and change it to player zero. Compile and save that. So that is the function of the uh, look and appearance of our character in place. We're now going to add some inputs to this thing. So we'll do. Uh, the move forward input, uh, which I don't have, so I have to set those up. Go to edit project settings. Go down to inputs. And go to axis mappings. We're going to add the move forward. And this is going to be using W. And it's going to also be using S. And obviously any other inputs you want to use, like game pads and so forth. Another movement input for move right. And it's going to use A and D. And on move forwards, S is going to be minus one in the scale. And for move right, A is going to be minus one in the scale because that's going to go left. And S is going to go backwards. We want to do now turn. And set that to the mouse uh, X. And we're going to do look up. And set it to mouse Y. And that's one that's going to be minus one because uh, it's inverted. So that makes sense there. So um, that'll do there. Hit close that. And on our character now, we can do move forwards. And from there, I want to get the uh, camera, uh, player camera manager. And we're going to get the uh, rotation of this. Get actor rotation. And we're going to split this. And we're going to make rotator and just plug in the yaw. And the return value here, we're going to get 
forward vector. And that's going to be going into our move forwards add movement input. Plugging that into the world direction and the excess value into scale. Then I move right. We're going to add movement input. And the direction is going to come from the rotator again, but this time I'm going to get the right vector. And that's going to go into direction and scale value into there. We then want to add the turn and look up. So turn. And this one's going to be doing add controller rotation your input. Uh, uh, yep, into the value there. And we're going to do look up. And we're going to add controller pitch input. So it looks up and down. And it value into the value there. Okay, so now we should have uh, this player controllable inside the game here. So we're just going to drag him out and put him into the world. Like so. We're now we're going to tell this world to use this field game mode now as well. So I'm going to go to the world settings, go to game mode override, and choose the field game mode. We then want to go and tell our game mode here to use this custom controller as well. So player controller, change that to field player controller. And the default pawn class will set to our field con player character. Well, it shouldn't be an issue because there's one already in the world. Let's hit play. And there is my character and I can look around and I can run around. Animations are quite basic at the moment. We haven't got much on there because it's based off the animation of the battle controller. We'll work on that in a moment. But essentially, there is our character. Okay, so uh, that's that set up. Next, I want to go into the player controller, set up the inventory for the items. I'm going to go into here, rebel, and do item inventory. And this is going to be set up exactly like we did in the battle one. So we go item base class, reference, make that a map, and make this an integer. And there's our item inventory. And we'll also have money in here as well. And money will be a, just a straight up infant, uh, integer. We can customize that as we need to. So the player controller at the start of this, uh, when starting a new level like this, needs to be able to load the data from the save file as well. And it needs to be able to communicate this across when it changes level to the battle. So let's set that up uh, for our game mode here. And we're going to go to begin play on here. And on begin play, we need to get the save file. And if that was successful, that'll go in like this. Uh, we're going to get a save game object and tell it to load inventory. And put that in there. And the player controller is going to be get player controller. So now it will take whatever inventory that we've got set up on in and collected in the battle will be also plugged into our uh, world here. That's loading the inventory. We now need to make it so when it um, leaves the level and uh, goes to the next one, it needs to save the inventory. So on the um, game mode here, we're going to do functions override and we're going to go to end play on this. And on here, we're going to get the save file. Again, check if it's successful or not. And if it was, we can take the save game object here and do save inventory. And we're going to plug in our player controller. OK. So I next need to go into my save game object and make it able to use the field player controller as well as the battle one. So let's go into this function here. And this is what I'm talking about here, these uh, casts we're doing here. So if it cast failed because it's not a battle player controller, which it isn't, we're going to take the cast failed here and we're going to cast to the field player contro uh, controller. Like that, and this will go into the player controller node there. 
And similarly, this is just going to be all using this. So let's move this along here. And I need to copy this across. Uh, whoops. And get the item inventory from there. So that's us saving the game. Um, we then want to do the load inventory. So cast failed. Cast to field player controller. We then want to plug in our player controller into the cast there. And again, very similarly here, we're going to take this and set the item inventory to this player inventory here. Okay, compile and save that. So that's the saving and loading done for the field player character. We now need to be able to transition from the field to the battle to test this all out. So this at the moment we're going to do um, with just a key press. Um, obviously later on this will be changed to be more randomized based on the footsteps. But for now, while we're testing this out, we're just going to do a key press. So I'm going to do the H key. And when I push H, I want it to open level by object reference. And I'll be choosing the uh, streets arena. Okay. So it's just going to cut to it. It's not going to do any fancy transitions or anything like that. But what should happen is the game mode is going to end and then it's going to save the content and bring it into the gameplay. Now, because we are saving that data across, it means that uh, the items that we have on our field controller, which is going to be nothing, is going to be taken over to the gameplay in the battle arena, which is going to be set to nothing, hopefully, as well. If it doesn't work, what we should see is the items on the battle item inventory uh, already appear there and that sounds kind of confusing but we should hopefully see that in action now to test this out properly I'm going to delete the uh, current save file that we have so I'm just going to go and go into show ex in explorer and in here we're going to go back up our project folder go to saved save games and let's find it's empty already that's good so just make sure it's all clear while testing this out properly So let's test this out. So run around. Oh, hang on. First of all, I want to make sure I've got uh, an item on my character controller. Let's go on here. And we'll set this up on item inventory. And we'll just give him just um, spider. No, not spider. So we'll give him just potions. Okay, we'll give him three potions. And then I want to go to the save game data. And I want to remove now the to be loaded from here so that we can actually test this out properly. Uh, so this was just used before to circumvent the loading of empty data, but now we don't need to do that because we're going from field to battle. Okay. And we will be doing it at some point also, the initialization of the whole entire thing, which sets up the defaults for the characters when they start the game. Um, so that will be fine like that. So now if I go and push play and go into the game, hit H, and if we go to the items menu, we should see that I've got only three potions. Okay, so it's brought forward the inventory from the field to the gameplay here. And likewise, if, when I finish the battle, it's then going to load that, save that data back to the gameplay and uh, back to save data. And then when we, when we return to field, it will load that save data back up and so on and so forth. So that's all good. Now we have to set up the ability for the battle to finish and then take us back to where we just were. So for that, we need to save their location of the player when they travel to the battle. So go to your save game data and we're going to add on here the player location. And that will be a transform. Yeah. Hit compile. And we make another function on here. And we'll call this one save player location. 
And this is going to take in a player reference, so take an input on here. And this will be a player character. And that will be of the type of a field player character. So we don't need it for the game, uh, the battle, because obviously they're fixed in place. This we want to remember where it was. So for save player location, we just get from there the world transform. I don't know what transform, actor transform. And we're going to set it to the player location here. Like so. And then we're going to tell it to save game to slot. So you may find that I'm doing this quite often, this bit here over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this to a function. And it goes save game file. That way I can just use this instead of keep doing the same thing over and over again. And there. Okay. And a save player location and just drag out a save game file. And there you go. Okay. So that's saving the player location. We then want to load the player location. So load player location. And again, we want to input on this to be for the player character. And for this, we're going to tell it to um, get, uh, sorry, set actor transform. And it's going to be based on this player location variable in here. And that's it. That's what we have to do for this one. Compile and save that. So the end play um, won't work. We have to take that off of there. I'm going to cut that from there. Instead, we're going to just put it on the H where we transfer to another level here. We'll do it on the, it'll be on the game mode eventually, but not right now. Okay, so once we've got that, we're going to go back to our controller and our game uh, character here. When we travel to the next level, which is this bit, um, and we save the inventory. We want it to also save the um, player location. So save player location. Put that in there. And the player character is going to be self in this instance. And put that across there. And then to load the player location, we're going to go to begin play on this character here. Begin play. And we're going to set it to load in the location. So I'm going to get the save file. And put in success as a branch. And the save game object here, we'll do load player location. It asks for the player character, which would be self. And there we go. Compile and save this. So we need to be able to remember where the player was when they returned back from their battle. So for that, we're going to store the information on the game instance, not in the save file. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we don't want this to persist per game. So in the game instance, once it's there, it will be cleared when the game is closed. So let's go to our game instance and which is our JRPG game instance is and in here we're gonna have a new variable on this and this will be pre battle transform and we'll set that as a transform value I'll save that I then want to when I go into battle save their current location so just go to the field player character here um, and when I'm doing the H key to transfer to a different level, we're going to store their location. So we're going to get the game instance. Oh, wrong one. Uh, do that again. Get game instance. And then we have to cast to our JRPG game instance. And from there, we have to set pre battle transform. Now go in there. The pre battle transform is going to be get actor transform. So we take our current transform, which is our location, rotation, and scale, and set it to our game instance. Remember, the game instance is persistent, so it will be the same value even when we change level. And then to make our character spawn in the correct location, we're going to go to begin play on here. And we are going to get the game instance. 
cast that to our game instance. And from there, we can get our actor, uh, not our um, pre battle transform. There we are. And we need to know whether or not we have come from a battle uh, or if this value has actually been set to anything. Because we don't want to do it set it to zero because otherwise we get sent to zero, zero, zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break this, get the location, and then get the length of the location. Now if this length here is greater than zero, it means that that value, that this location here is not zero, zero, zero. So we're going to take this out and put a branch in. And connect that up there. And so it means if it's true, we want to teleport the character. So I'm going to go set actor transform. Plug this in to there. And well, new transform is going to come from our pre-battle transform. And that is it. So let's test this out in our game. So I'm going to go over here. So the character at the moment doesn't really turn or do anything special yet. We'll fix that in the next episode. But I'm going to go over to this side of the, of the level. Over here, for example. Hit H. Go into battle. Kill these enemies. And attack this one. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to heal the characters as well. So if I go into uh, items, potions, heal, greystone. Okay, so he's up to 102 in his health. Make the enemy to attack. And we'll just kill this last one. Okay, so he's only on 94, and this one, uh, phase on 67, and gives him 42. And we use one of our potions as well. Okay. So when it comes back out, we're now in the correct location. And if I go into a battle again, you can see our health values are the same, our level is the same, and our items should be the same as well. We've got two left. So everything's there is working with the saving and loading of our various informations. And there we have it, a completed field system. But it's not done yet. Now, if you're familiar with Final Fantasy games in particular, you may be familiar with some, some sort of screen effect to happen to indicate the transition between field and battle. So in the next episode, we're going to go through how to create the smash screen transition to transition from game in the field to game in the battle. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.